you've tuned in to Gila Nehemia, Sacred Erotic, Sacred Sexuality and Ascension podcast. I'm so, so glad you're here. It is um, a special moon phase uh, today, and it is called waning gibbous. And I've seen this term before, waning gibbous, and I always wondered what exactly that is. Um, So those of you that are listening, thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. Those of you who are new to my channel, thank you for being here. Um, A little bit about me, I I talk about the moon, I talk about energy, I talk about sexuality, writing, ascension, um, and truly to connect into our heart space, into our womb space, and into our higher selves so that we can awaken, ascend, really realize who we are as a soul. So um, I'm going to get back to what the um, waning gibbous phase of the moon is. So stay tuned for um, the beginning. We are going to take 3D breaths. So I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. I hope you're not driving. If you are, please pull over or um, do this at a later time. And those of you that are not, I'm inviting you to set a sacred space, light a candle, um, you know, just really set a sacred intention at this time as I'm going to do as well. So I'd like you to take three deep breaths. And um, when you take a deep breath, hold for three and then um, release for three and then take another in breath for three. So we'll do it in threes. So let's start now. I am calling in the sound of the waves the sound of the wind. I'm calling in the sounds of silence. As we connect into our deeper, higher heart, as well as our heart, our sacral chakras, our connection to the moon, to the stars, to the sun, to the galaxies, to all that is, and to assist us as we do this soul merge, as we're on this pathway of um, openness, of expansiveness, of true heart-centered consciousness. I'd like to invite you to share a few intentions to yourself. You can also share them with me in, um, in the comments if you'd like as well. One more deep breath, aho, and so it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm feeling this deep connection to my intuition at this time. And I wanted to, as I said earlier in the beginning of this podcast, want to talk about what this phase of the moon is. It's called the waning gibbous phase. And it's usually, um, well, gibbous means it actually is like kind of an oblong shape. And it's the observable part um, of the moon that's greater than a semicircle and less than a circle. So the actual definition, um, it's I'm reading it, it says of the moon, gibbous is of the moon, having the observable illuminated part greater than a semicircle and less than a circle. Um, so it is waning because it's going to get smaller as we're moving into a new moon, which is going to be in about a week and a half. Um, So we had the full moon. There's always two week periods between a full moon and a new moon. And they each have phases. There are various phases. There's about four phases of the moon. You have the first quarter, you have the full moon, you have the third quarter and the new moon. And um, And then there are, you know, there are different phases like I just shared. It's called right now the waning gibbous. Um, and then we go into the first quarter, the waxing crescent, and then the new moon, and then you go backwards. Um, so it's usually those, um, you know, that's what it's called. 
And just so that you know the moon terminology, you know, like everything has its own lingo. So that's the lingo. Um, so, but what is the energy? You know, so I'm going to ask you some questions in this particular podcast. You know, how are you feeling? What's coming up for you? Um, as we're moving from the illuminated part going into the darker parts of the moon as we see it um, not necessarily it's happening but as we see it from from this perspective um, as humans on this earthly plane uh, it's also a reflection of us perhaps i know for me going deeper into into shadows shadows that may be coming up um and into also a deep sense of worth i've been talking about worth in a lot of in the last few podcasts if you've um, noticed those of you who've been following me if you haven't and you've just tuned in right now thank you for being here um and uh you know and i and i i I want to talk about this in terms of relationships but i also want to talk about this in terms of your relationship with yourself um I know for many years, you know, I've been on this path um, consciously for about five years and um, I've had a lot of mentors, a lot of healers, people that I trust. And, and, you know, I was thinking about what am I going to say today? And um, honestly, a part, a big part of my work is not about what I'm advising you to do, but more about how to connect into your own wisdom, your heart wisdom, your, your soul wisdom, your womb space wisdom or your sacral chakra wisdom, um, your root chakra wisdom, like how do you connect into your wisdom? And um, and it's different for many people. And, I, and uh, you know, um, a big part of my work is focusing on how trauma has um, kept us back from our own wisdom, had us really question our wisdom and not even know what our wisdom is, you know, because we've been taught to always listen to somebody else. And and I was really thinking about this, actually. Uh, my, my kids and I were talking about something earlier today. And, you know, I don't really consider myself a therapist. I consider myself a coach. And what does that mean? And what are the differences? Um, and we're going to get into relationships today, too. So stay tuned. Um, but I feel like this is an important conversation um, just to define who I am and how I see myself and how um, and how, how I see this this community growing in terms of people who are advising. And like I, I had a therapist for many years, so I just want to share with everybody um, I really respect therapy and I really think it's important, you know, whatever kind of therapy that you've been through. And a lot of the therapy that I've been through has been talk therapy, you know, like I talked, I talked to psychologists, um, you know, when a variety of different things happened in my life and I knew that I needed help. And I, I honestly didn't um, always find it helpful uh, because I was talking, which is really good, you know, especially coming from a place where I felt silenced. It was really important for me to talk. Um, yet I didn't feel that I had the, um, the tools I needed to actually step into a new version of myself. And, you know, so I want to define what ascension is to me. And I want you to ask yourself, what is ascension to you? Like, why are you tuning into this? What is really, um, you know, how, how am I connecting to you? Are you connecting to yourself? Are you learning how to connect to your own wisdom? And I feel like that is a super important question because the way that you uh, think about yourself and the things that you feel like you want to do are your um, being asked to do um, really comes from deep within your soul and your heart. And sometimes it's really hard to define those things, you know, right? It's hard to um, elucidate that. It's hard to put that into words, especially those of us who are artists, which I feel like we all are in a variety of different art forms. You know, for me, it's words and it's not always spoken words. You know, sometimes it's a written word. Sometimes I'm singing a song, you know, or I'm singing a tune or I'm dancing, you know, it's like, it's the expression, right? And, um, and then it's the communication with others. It's not just about me, right? It's also communication with other beings, other people, the energies. Uh, But going back into ascension, you know, like, I feel like 
what the the things that I didn't have, the things that I really wanted, and this may not be you, but I'm just sharing from my perspective, what I really wanted from therapy was to help me to move through difficult emotions and find a way to, um, to number one, like, you know, after my mother died, it was really challenging for me. And number one, to like kind of accept that and to say, okay, that happened and how can I move on? But it wasn't just move on. It's like to really kind of see the full picture. I didn't know how to say it, honestly, right? I didn't know how to explain that to somebody. I just knew I felt sadness and I didn't want to feel sad anymore, right? I didn't want to feel depressed. I didn't want to feel like a void in my heart, but I did. And it was hard for me to figure out how to share that with somebody. Um, And so in my years, many years of therapy, um, I didn't feel like, I actually made any changes. I was sharing my feelings, but I wasn't making any changes. And so that's when I kind of a light bulb went off and I realized, you know, I was still doing many of the same patterns that I had been doing for years. And I was like, wait, I need something different. And that's how I got to different healers. But I had that awareness that I needed something different, something that was really going to, you know, change my patterns. And, you know, connect into a deeper part of myself because that's what I wanted for me. So I think the first thing for any of you who are listening to me or have been tuning in or just happen to find me on YouTube, you know, is to ask yourself, what do you actually want from your life? You know, usually we say, oh, we want more money or we want a a, a a relationship, a long lasting relationship. Uh, we want a better connection with our children or we want to just, um, really feel connected to our purpose, you know, and those are all great lofty goals and those are all attainable. But, and I feel like, at least for me and those of you who've resonated with me, whom I may know personally that you're listening, thank you, thank you for listening, um, is that we've identified, we've clearly identified that whatever we've been doing may have helped us, but now we're on to something else and we're ready for that new start. And it's gotta be something different than what we've done. You know, and so I feel that there are actually a lot of amazing um, therapists that are introducing energy work, introducing healing work, and it's not just talk therapy. Because I feel like talk therapy, at least for me, wasn't enough. Also, because I am not just into talking, you know, like I ha- I'm not, I-, I do talk on this podcast and I thank you for listening, but I don't talk a lot as a person. At least I don't feel that way. I'm not a very talkative person. Um, I do like to share my feelings and I do like to feel people and I want to like listen. Um, So I felt like I needed a different type of healing to get me to that place where I felt comfortable speaking. I felt comfortable being myself. And so if you're encountering um, therapists where you feel like you're not fully being heard for all of the complexity that you are, you know, I would definitely encourage you to connect with me or other coaches that you feel connected to, because I feel coaching is like a new, it's kind of a new field, but that's been around forever. I'm also a teacher. I'm a, you know, I've uh, got a degree in teaching and I'm a writer and I've, you know, I've always been those things. But I feel like I've, I've combined these things because I had coaches, because I had healers, and then I created something that really works for me and that other people are resonating with. That's a little bit about me, but I also wanted to share that for you because I feel like those of you that are listening, maybe you're looking for something different, you know, something to shake up your life, something to really get you to your dreams. And sometimes we feel like we're in a standstill, like you're in, in a traffic jam, right? Or you're taking the same route to work every day and like it's not, it's not exciting anymore, you know, and you're like, okay, I'm going to take this new route or I'm going to do something new in my job or I'm going to be doing something new in my life to kind of shake things up to like bring some more spice into my life. You know, sometimes we want more love because we're like, oh, you know, love's going to open us up. But in actuality, it's like we need to open ourselves up. Nobody's going to do it for us. So that's number one in terms of relationships. You know, like I think sometimes we're looking for that panacea, right? This person's going to help me. This person's going to give me love and then I'm going to feel happy. But in actuality, how can you make yourself happy every day, every moment by just being you? 
And I feel like for definitely those of us who've gone through trauma, including me, I always wanted somebody else to do it for me, right? It's that form of instant gratification. It's that form of like, somebody else takes the responsibility from me. I don't have to do it. And, um, and that's just the way it works, right? That's what I've been taught. That's what I know. I know if I get that job, I make them more money. I could buy the new house, blah, 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 right? It's a whole path. You know what? Relationships just don't work that way. You know, the first thing that we need to do is look at ourselves. Um, and then we need to see where we're not giving enough to ourselves. We're not expanding our own horizons. And when we just focus on us and we focus on being happy and pleasurable, then that makes some more things come our way because we're in a good mood. But, you know, we're in, let's face it, we're not always happy and pleasurable. We have to deal with things that we've that's happened in our lives that haven't been so um, some so amazing. And, uh, and first and foremost, I think it's just being honest with ourselves that these things have happened and say, okay, these things have happened, but doesn't mean that that's the end of the world or I have to continue to behave that way. And, um, so coming back to the crux of this, uh, podcast is how do we connect into our own wisdom? Because still as a coach, you know, or as, um, as a person who had been coached, I was looking for answers from my coach, you know, like, how do I do X or how do I do Y and, um, and how am I going to get there? Or when I started my business, how am I going to make my business be successful? And nobody has an answer, right? You know, they're going to, you're going to have people that say, I have the perfect solution for you. You know, I see this all the time, like, oh, you take my course and I'm going to get you to X, Y, Z, you know? And so I take your course, but I don't get to X, Y, Z. And I, then I get disappointed. I'm like, why didn't I get to X, Y, Z? And then the, the person is saying, well, you didn't do X and you didn't do Y and you didn't do Z, so you're not going to get to X, Y, Z. But you know what? Their X, Y, Z is not my X, Y, Z. And I feel like this is the important point. You know, people can, can help you to get somewhere, but it's also about us processing what we need to do in our own way to get to where we need to go. You know, like, let's say you have to go to the store to buy a, a bunch of groceries for you and your family. And so, you know, the things that you want to buy, but then there are different choices. And then you have to make what those, you know, you have to choose the right things to make whatever it is that you want. And your choices may not be my choices. And we might be making different foods, but we're both satisfying our, our, um, our taste buds, our hunger, our budget, you know, all of those different things. So there's actually a variety of different levels there, right? I'm giving you a very, very concrete example as much as I can. So I feel like we all need our own individual needs met and not everybody can do that. And so I feel like that way with relationships too, you know, it's like, not every um, person's going to really gel with my vibration. You know, not every person's going to really appreciate all of who I am. At first and foremost, I need to appreciate all of who I am. I need to understand what my needs um, are and I need to really flow with me. Once I've done that, which can take some time, um, then I can, um, you know, connect with someone else and it doesn't have to be linear again like it could happen at any time and you know allow that to ebb and flow and i feel like sometimes you know we have certain um criteria about people who we want to connect with and we're like if you don't meet this criteria you know i don't want to be with you and i feel like and i know i've said this before like I, that's it's really harsh you know sometimes because it's not like um sometimes we're all like, we're all working on ourselves and we're all working on trying to be better people. And, um, and in order to be a really good partner to someone, we have to first be a really good partner for ourselves. Uh, why am I sharing this? Because I feel like a lot of things have been going on in my mind this week, especially, um, issues of energy within ourselves. And I know I've discussed this, but the song Lola has been in my mind this entire week. If any of you don't know the song, definitely look up the kinks and uh, put in Lola. So I know you've heard this before, or I know many of you ha have heard it, and I'll just sing a little bit of what I remember. Um, but, you know, there's a line that... Um, 
la 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 she asked me to sing and asked me to dance and she walk like a woman and talk like a man go alola so it's actually a beautiful song by the kings of this um singer or probably somebody who met um a woman but uh she was actually a man now where how did i get here um one it's about energy Two, it's about who we define ourselves as and and being accepted for who we are. So in the song, he says how he was really surprised. You know, she hugs him and it almost broke his spine. Uh, la, 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 la. Um, and he talks about Coca-Cola. You know, he makes it fun too. But he was really surprised. He didn't understand what to do. He was confused. He talks about like there's a confusion between genders. And I feel like there's gender is a big issue, right? And um, and I'm not going to give you any kind of, you know, big um, lecture about gender. But I, I, what I want to say today is what's been on my mind is how can we just be people and not put ourselves or anyone else in boxes, you know, like you can prefer you may be straight you may be um you know bi you may be whatever you are you know everything's acceptable all i'm here to share is if we can totally accept ourselves can we accept all of someone else not just for our own intimate life but in you know into in the spirit of oneness can we totally accept ourselves you know, if you are able to totally accept yourself, then you can you can completely accept another, whether they're in your intimate circle or not, because we are all here to have to do a mission, whatever that mission is. You know, I don't know. I can't say everybody's mission. I don't know what everyone's mission is. I know what my mission is. I know what I'm doing and I know that I'm continuing to go on the path. I may or may not know what's three steps ahead of me, but I know what's right in front of me. And I know that I'm complete with it. And I, going back to therapy, I never really felt like I was complete with myself when I was in therapy. And even when I was with coaches, I didn't feel like I was complete with myself, but I knew I was on the right path because it felt better. It felt like I was being more authentic. And I feel like the song Lola that was written in the 70s, you know, really, I didn't, I only knew the song because my brothers and sisters listened to 70s music. So I knew it when I got a little bit older. And I was like, it really always like sent, sent message to me. Like, what does that mean? What does it mean to be LGBTQ? You know, what does it mean? You know, why are some people on the outskirts of society? And why are some people in the in the center of it is it because of the choices that we made are that are those really our choices or were they made for us you know your um sexual preferences are they are they your own choice do you feel good with that and if you do amazing if you don't if you want to explore something else why not you know if you're with a partner who's interested in exploring various things with you fantastic if you're not into that that's also cool like just to be who you are but sometimes we don't even know who that is because we just have not been able to truly be who we want to be and i feel like this is such an important point you know like i was always looking for direction from somebody else or you know and I just, then I finally actually said to myself just today I was like wait I don't need any direction all I need is to go inside myself and say what do I need is this resonating with me what is going on with the moon that's also going on with me a part of me is being illuminated and a part of me is going dark and I don't know where that part of me that's going dark is and I don't know exactly what's being illuminated either, but I do know that I'm okay with me. And I feel like it's such an important point that it's it's so hard to like say clearly, but I know that um, relationships are not a clear path. There's no you know set of stairs that takes us from zero to a hundred. You know, right? It's all, it goes to the right, it goes to the left, it goes to the center, it goes in uh, ways that I can't even explain. 
right? Because it deals with our emotions, it deals with it deals with our mental state, it deals with our consciousness, it deals with our spirituality, it deals with sexuality, our body. You know, it, there's so many different um, aspects to it, and I feel that when we do, we talk about relationships, we're like, oh, that we put it into a category. Right. We're trying to categorize, you know, if you've ever worked in SEO or anything like that, right, you're always looking to categorize to get people's attention. But in actuality, it's it, it's pervasive in everything that we do. Relationship with yourself, relationship to um, to what you eat, relationship to love, to your idea of love, you know, it's all encompassing. And just like that person in the song Lola, who was like, wait, what's going on? Is this a man? Is this a woman? Who am I? What, where, are, what are we? Can there be a we? You know, like what is acceptable? What is not acceptable? There's all these things that's happening inside of our mind subconsciously that we don't even know how to answer. And it becomes like this, oh my God, what am I doing? You know, and it's like, hold on let's take a moment and just first breathe hear the sound of your breath let's say that everything's permissible that's where i started i started my journey five years ago by saying everything's permissible I can do anything as long as it feels good to me and I'm feeling authentic and my heart feels safe and loved. Then all the cards are open. It took a while for me to open all my cards to myself, not including another. So why am I, what am I talking about today? I'm talking about allowing yourself to open up all your cards to you, to say, I can open up my heart to myself, to the divine, to another authentically and be who I am and not even know exactly all of who I am, but I'm willing to explore that with myself, with God, with another, with others, because I'm being true to me. I know those of you who are living in the States may be tuning into the whole case going on with Johnny Depp and his um, previous partner. And uh, I'm not gonna go into that whole thing, but what I wanna say is that healthy relationships are on the rise. That's all I wanna say about that. Um, relationships that are abusive are definitely going on the slow incline. <laughs> right? We're moving into more healthy relationships with ourselves. So therefore we want more healthy relationships with the divine, with, with another, with the earth. So it begins with us. And why do I want to just, um, you know, talk about abusive relationships? Because that was what was presented to us, right? That was what we were, that we were taught because that's what most of us saw. Some of us had really beautiful family relationships, but most of us didn't. Um, because we're star seeds, because we're here for a different purpose. You know, I think so, but I can't be completely sure. But I know for me that that was my path and it was necessary for me to deal with that in order to come into healthy relationships. And that doesn't just mean um, you know, how I talk to myself, but how I deal with my body, how I deal with my, um, organs, how I deal with my time, healthy relationship is everything. How I deal with, um, the vitamins that I take, why do I take them? You know, it's, it's about everything. So healthy doesn't mean just, oh, my partner loves me. I love my partner. We have a wonderful time together. We really listen to each other. We're authentic. We're, we're using, um, you know, very open language. We don't, there's no violence in it. Yes, that's all true. And it also begins with everything that you do with yourself and your life, how you treat 
today I was cleaning my sink, you know, really cleaning and scrubbing. And, you know, like I was just getting into this mode of really wanting a deep cleanse. And I was asking myself, why am I doing this? I'm doing this, of course, to have a clean sink, but also to deeply clean myself. I'm into a very deep cleansing mode of my body. As I said in an earlier podcast, we are, we are getting into some of the places that we just let lie because we just couldn't deal with it for a while. But now we have the time, we have the energy, and we have the desire to truly be healthy to a core. And when we're really taking care of ourselves, the self-care, you know, then everything is also being addressed because nothing, nothing is left unturned because we want it to be healthy as much as we possibly can in what we want, right? My definition of health is not gonna be your definition of health, but my definition of health is what I need. So what's your definition of health? In order to have a sacred, healthy, divine relationship with someone, conscious, um, it means dealing with everything about us. Us, me, you, we collectively and singularly, um, you know, always putting ourselves in the center to know that our needs are being met and we are helping to meet the needs of others. Because by meeting our own needs, we are then, um, by process of reciprocation, we can meet the, the, um, the needs of others, the law of reciprocation. So, why am I sharing all this with you? Because I feel like sacred divine relationships are not just about um, amazing spiritual love, which is definitely true, but it's also about being healthy within ourselves. It's being allowing ourselves to move into the edges that are uncomfortable and still allowing it to unfold. And I know we're already at the 30 minute mark and I feel like I just got started. So stay tuned for next week when I'm going to get more into this, like stepping into the edges, because that's really the, that was always my big theme for, um, for my, my coaching and my podcast, you know, is to moving into the edges, those edges that nobody likes to talk about. But those, those edges make our relationships exciting and also make them truly deeply vulnerable and, and also can be very scary. But it's in that, in that um, corridor of scary and exciting that we, um, we tango, that we find these, you know, that we open up our creativity, that we open up our womb space, that we open up to the true um, creative essence of who we are. So I'm encouraging you to go there in this um, waning gibbous moon to explore who you really are by stepping into those edges, by stepping into the dark, by stepping into the light, by wading through the jungle of yourselves. So my invitation to you in this podcast um, are at the at right now is to really just explore who am I? What do I really want? And what really makes me tick? You know, what turns me on? Where do I lose myself because I'm so in love with me? And I feel like you're going to have a lot of answers by getting into that kind of clarity. So I do hope that this uh, podcast is um, helping the wheels turn in your mind and in your heart and in your sacral chakra to be like, yeah, I am really tuned in to my own power, desire, and the embers that are burning bright in, in my own being. Because that's really where I, I would love for us to go together. Um, so if this is um, really connecting to you, definitely connect with me at gila at gilanahemi.com and send me some feedback. I do want to share feedback. I uh, wanted to share it earlier, but I got so into this podcast that um, it's it's at the end. And I wanted to thank um, I wanted to thank Tom Jaszinski um, for commenting last week 
or this past week on my last podcast, and we are actually in Guidely together. Uh, there's a link to connect to both of us in Guidely. He says, great info and content, Gila. Thank you. I'm a Scorpio sun and definitely felt some of those themes and energies. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I love your content on Guidely. Definitely check us both out in Guidely. We're both guides, and um, I'm so happy to have this connection with him and have this connection with you. And I'm really excited to go into more of this self-realization and really stepping into the edges of our sexuality, of our relationships to um, live a very fulfilling life that's both uh, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, extremely exhilarating. So I'm inviting you all to step into that. I'm inviting you to to, um, send me more feedback so I can read it on my next podcast or send me questions, connect with me. I'm available on uh, email, gila at gilanahemia.com or you can connect with me in Guidely or in Facebook or any of the social media. And uh, definitely on YouTube, send me a message or send a message of my um, feedback to my podcast and I'll definitely read it here. So I hope that that this um, little bit of a mishmash uh, connected with you. Let me know. I know that I really wanted to share going into the edges and um, and Lola, (laughs) which I'll go into more next week. Uh, So stay tuned and thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Let's take three deep breaths to close the circle. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God, Source, Universe. Thank you for the angels. Thank you for Mother Earth. Thank you for our heart spaces. Thank you for helping us to see the light and the dark and to help us to be our authentic, true selves in this beautiful collective awakening. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Aho, and so it is. Namaste, Om Shanti, Shalom.